Alright guys, welcome back um, to making a dandelion clock in Maya. This is the final part where I'll show you how to do the rendering and um, lighting and of course the um, final post-production in Nuke. So let's take a look at uh, what we already have. We have the particles that are floating. Okay, so before we want to render this, we would actually need to cache the particles. The We need to cache the simulation so that when we send it to the renderer, it's going to um, not spend time calculating um, the particles. So to do that, okay, you just need to select your particle. Okay, go to solvers, create a particle disk cache. Okay, as long as um, it saves, uh, it's going to save it into a particles directory of your project folder. So make uh, do make sure that you have a project folder for your um, scene. Okay, like edit. So, um, is also to keep everything organized. Okay, so after you cache it, you'll be able to scrub the timeline like what I'm doing right here. Okay, okay. Now, um, for this shot, I use the physical sun and sky as my um lighting. So, how do I do that? Okay, we just need to come to indirect lighting. Okay. Click create for physical sky and sky uh sun and sky and by default okay um it will actually give you a uh exposure simple node but um I find that okay the exposure simple node uh is not quite easy to understand in the attributes okay so I would I personally like to deal with camera settings like shutter speed ISO F stop and all that. So I replace the simple node with a photographic node. Okay. But there are certain things that you need to set it up before it works. Okay. For one, you have to um set the exposure photographic uh node to connect to the physical uh sky. Okay, we we will need to connect the message to the MI sky exposure. So to do that we middle mouse drag, drop it on um Visual sky, click other. Okay, we will see this. Select the message and come under uh to the last um um last attribute which is MI sky exposure. So we'll hook that up. Okay, as for the camera, get the camera shape node. Okay. If, uh in order to select the camera shape node, all you have to do is to um select your camera. Okay, um press down so that you're selecting the camera shape and just add it to the graph okay add selected to graph and it will show up in your graph and okay what we are going to do is to have the uh, message of the photographic node in the MI lens shader okay so to do that okay message into the camera shapes MI okay is under mental ray controls MI lens shader okay as for physical sky okay we will hook up the message to MI environment shader okay after you are, are done with that you should end up with um, the setup I have over here okay and one additional step that is required uh, in order to make the phot photographic node work is to um, under physical sky change the R G and B unit conversion to 0 0.318 okay yeah, this uh, will allow the image to render correctly okay I have other settings on my physical sky like um, I add a little bit of haze and decrease the height a little bit blur it change the ground color okay so and of course the sun direction I'm um you can control it okay uh by coming here and rotating this sun direction I have it uh sh 45 degrees coming from the right from the z um z direction so um this part is completely up to you to um figure out so let's um take a look at um the render Okay, before we render, okay, I would like to point out that if you have it at um, 
default output profile of linear, you are not going to see the right image because um, it's in linear space, which is not right for the um, our monitor. So we have to preview it in sRGB. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, so um, this is the render that took one minute and seven seconds to render. Okay, um, we have uh, this shot here, so you can see that it's working out fine. You have then a nice alpha for you to do some compositing later on. Okay, so okay, this is up to you uh, right now to go back to the shaders and kind of uh, see whether you feel that um, certain parts are not working for you, you can correct it and all that okay but um, you don't have to get it to 100% of what you want just get it somewhere between 80% 90% will do you can always um, go to post and color correct it okay so I'll run through uh, very quickly the render settings that I have okay um, as uh, for motion blur I'm using MV 2D toxic which we can just add from here. Okay, it's um, 2D motion vector. Okay. For things like um, the sampling mode, uh, I'm using the adaptive sampling. Okay, I for the final um, because I had a good uh, render budget, I just um, hit it all the way to three so that the fur is looking uh, really sharp and really nice. And for um, filter I use Mitchell which is um, the sharpest uh, you can get and ray tracing I just uh, set it all the way up although you don't really need it okay because there's not so much of reflect reflection and refraction okay but uh, for this project I had quite a bit of um, render budget because I was using a render farm okay so uh, under frame buffer if you are using EXR, be sure to change this to 4 times 32 bit RGBA. But let's say you are if you are using TIFF, you can pretty much stick to 4 times 8 bit RGBA. Okay, so um, I am not using anything uh, like Final Gather because there's uh, not much of a use for it. Okay, so after you are done, switch. Uh, be sure to switch this back to linear and you're ready to batch render um, what you have okay so um, I'll see you um, over in Nuke alright guys um, we are over at Nuke okay one thing that I forgot to mention is that um, I rendered two layers actually um, there's only one layer with a different background because I wasn't too satisfied with the um, background that um, physical sky gave me so I rendered um, the dandelion alone okay, without the background okay, to do that if you come under MI physical sky okay, if you scroll down there's this use background by default this is checked on you can turn it off so that it doesn't render the background okay so let's um, come over to nuke okay we we have a um, the dandelion alone without the background we have a background okay uh, which is um, actually a just a blue background and we have a motion uh, 2d motion blur pass okay which you can't actually preview it from here so let's come back here okay so um, the first step is to add the uh, motion blur okay to do that we need to combine this um, motion blur pass Okay, into our um, master beauty um, flow. Okay, so we'll use a shuffle, shuffle copy. Okay. Okay, this is uh, number one. So I will pipe number one's um, motion vector pass. Okay, into the motion. Okay, right here into the motion um, uh, channel. So this and this will become U and V, okay. And the RGBA will remain the same. So so U U and V of 
our output will be equal to the um, motion p uh, pass. Okay, so when we come to vector blur, okay, we just need to select motion and have it at um, 0 0.5, which is the kind of the default value, which works fine for me. Okay, you can see it here. So this is readout, this is width. Okay, so it adds a blur to your seats, which are moving. Okay, so uh, as for my back uh, background, okay, I added a ramp so that um, when I comp it over, it's uh, slightly brighter on the bottom, and when I merge it, okay, using a merge node, okay, which is uh, over, okay, you can see that um, it's kind of um, looking like more like what what I want, okay. The horizon is like more in a dreamy effect, okay. So I'll give it some color correction to get it to look like um, the colors that I planned in my color script of my music video, okay. And give it a little bit of glow so that it has a little bit more contrast, okay. Some lens distortion. Um, I actually this uh this is a subtle thing which I used uh, in my music video, and I just uh stick to it as part of my workflow in order to maintain uh, a consistent look and of course uh, I use the same grain that I used throughout the music video okay and in the end um, I remove the alpha by giving it a constant alpha okay clamp and we are ready to write the final okay the final shot here okay so in my write note I just need to uh, output it to okay I call it 06 clock underscore okay uh, the frame number dot tiff okay that's my final output okay if you do that correctly you should be able to get to the video that I had previously which is over here okay so I hope you enjoyed this um, tutorial I hope it's useful. Okay, as I said, this is my very very first tutorial. Pardon me if I made a lot of um, mistakes here and there. Um, I'm learning as well as you are. So, um, if there are questions, I hope you can um, direct them to me over at um, in the comments below, or you could just um, email me at uh, aqs dash um, cg dot com. Okay, so. Um, I'll see you in another tutorial hopefully and take care